Hello YouTube! My name is Nye, this is the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield and you are watching Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials. In today's video I'm finally going to be finishing my little mini-series on the style of John Doyle. I'm going to be running you through the interesting way in which he strums reels. What he basically does is takes a very very simple pattern and then adds some really cool syncopated features to the way that he accents that pattern. So I'm going to be running you through a few different ways that you can do that and I'm also going to be showing you some ways that you can take that and apply it to other reels within the Irish and Scottish folk traditions. Before we get into this video, could you do me an absolutely huge favour? Just go down there, hit the little like button. Uh, you could also hit the subscribe button as well. If you enjoy it, you'll get a free Celtic guitar tutorial from myself every Saturday. And you'll get access to the Folky Fridays live stream as well, which is on Friday evenings at 5.30 GMT. So first things first, if you haven't seen the three preceding parts of this series, then I recommend checking them out first. They're going to show you all the kinds of chords that John Doyle uses. He plays in drop D tuning, so get your guitar, uh, drop the bottom string down to a low D. And then let's get started. The first thing to say about John Doyle's strumming pattern then is that he always plays reels very, very straight. And it's a really simple bass pattern that he works from. If you're tapping though, you'll end up doing two taps per bar because you can't tap one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Reels go along really fast and your feet can't keep up. So you'll tap on one, three, one, three, like that. So you've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And what you're going to do with your strumming is break every one, two, three, four in half. So you'll end up with something like this. One and two and three and four. The way that John Doyle strums is very straight. So those quavers or eighth beats for uh, people over the various C's, um, those quavers are all equally spaced. One and two and three and four and they are not swung. So it's not one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that's the thing that you can see generally in a lot of Irish trad players as well, they will play reels pretty straight. John Doyle generally, in all the clips I've seen of him playing reels, tends to play them pretty straight. If you don't understand what I mean by swung versus straight, I did make a video a while back that explains that very clearly, so go and check that out, it's linked in the corner right now. And if not, let's carry on and have a look at some of the ways that you can have some fun modifying this rhythm. But let's just take an example of a simple thing to practice that you can do to get used to this um, John Doyle style strumming pattern. If I just take a very simple chord progression in the key of D, I'm going to do two bars on D, one on G, and one on A, and I'm just going to loop that round. So here's what that would sound like played at a sort of fairly sedate speed. Something like this. So it's really simple, one and two and three and four and. You'll notice as well that as I do that, I tend to naturally gravitate towards sli very slightly accenting one and two and three and four. Because in um, Irish reels, players that play them very straight tend to kind of accent those offbeats like that. Bum ba 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 bum ba 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 that kind of thing. Um, so I tend to end up sort of weighting my strumming that way. Um, just naturally as I do it to kind of match the feel of the tune. So that very basic pattern is your starting point, but there's loads of interesting ways that John Doyle varies that throughout this video of him playing live with Liz Carroll in Boston from 2009. So the first thing that John Doyle tends to do is every time he changes to a new chord, he'll accent the first strum on the new chord. So going back to my simple little progression that I was doing in the key of D, one, two bars of D, one of G, one of A, um, if I accented the first one in each chord, it would sound something like this. Something like that. 
like that. So you can see when I hit a new chord, it's just coming out slightly louder. If you want to make that accent really clear, then miss the up that's straight after it. So instead of doing one and two and three and four and on the first chord, I would do one, two and three and four and. So. <laughs> As you can see there you can kind of mix and match so what I might do is at the start of a section to make a really punchy start I might do that miss out that second that um, miss out that first upstroke and then throughout the rest of it I would just do down up down up down up down up down up down up something like that because that really adds a lot of punch to a chord change so if you want to make one chord particularly prominent to the listener then uh, that's the way to do it just miss out the first up strum those kinds of things. The next thing I want to talk about is sometimes John Doyle will accentuate an upstroke just before a chord change and that gives you this really cool kind of choppy effect. One place in the video that he does it is at 51 seconds in, he plays this nice um, A minor as a substitute for C. I've talked a lot about that in another part of this series, which you can check out in the corner of the screen. So if you'd like to find out more about the substitutions and stuff that he's using there, go and check that out. The chord progression in its entirety goes A, E, F, G. And so with the normal strumming pattern, it would just be something like this. What he does is he puts a lot more uh, weight on the up strum just before each chord change and what that does is it gives you this really cool kind of um, sucking effect in a way where it kind of feels like it's leading into the next chord. It almost sounds a little bit like a swing drummer. If you listen to um, old swing records a lot, which I do, then uh, you'll always hear the hi-hats going and it's that little before the beat there's a t and that really kind of leads you in so t -t 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 -t. and that's kind of what he's doing here he's replicating that with his strumming pattern so he goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three like that so at speed that kind of sounds something like this so you can hear I'm getting ding ga ding ga ding ga ding ga ding ga ding ga ding ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk the next thing I'd like to have a look at can be found at about 40 seconds in, um, or just a little bit after there. John Doyle's playing the second half of the first tune, which the tune is in C major and the second part begins on G, and he plays something like this. <laughs> And the first interesting thing to notice about this section is that when he does F back to C in the last bar, he's actually changing um, before the beat. So it's, instead of going half a bar each, one and two and on F, and then three and four and on C, that's what you'd expect, he's actually going one and two on the F, and changing to C on the AND, 3 and 4 and, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. That's where the change is coming. What he does is accentuates the chord change, because he always does that when he changes chords, um, the first strum on the new chord will be slightly louder to mark that there's been a change. And that gives you this kind of really cool funky stuttery effect. <laughs> So all together, that little section, very slowly, sounds like this. You can take this trick of um, changing chords a quaver too early and use it for loads of other interesting things as well. Um, one thing that I really like to do is, for example, if I was in the key of D major, 
Let's say I've got a progression like uh, D to G, very simple, 1 to 4. Um, I might change to my G one quaver before the start of the following bar. So I'd have something like D. And G a little bit early. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So I've changed on the last up of that bar. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. And as in the previous example, you would accentuate that upstroke in order to make it clear that you've changed chord. Just going back to that little section around 40 seconds in, there's another quite interesting thing that John Doyle's doing there. He's actually duplicating the um, rhythm of the melody in which strums he accentuates. So the melody goes dum ba 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 like that, bum ba 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 uh, That's the kind of weighting of it. And he does exactly the same with his strumming. So he goes... Like that. So he's accentuating the um, strums that are lit up on the wall um, in order to match the tune. So that is one real advantage of this very simple down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up strumming pattern. Because every quaver is there, and you're not really having to think too much about that because your right hand's just performing a constant motion, if you're really getting into the melody, and you know the melody well, you will probably find that you naturally accentuate the beats which are accentuated in the melody, and that's going to sound really kind of pro um, and really enhance the melody, which of course is what you're job as a backing musician is to do, really, at the end of the day. So the pattern that we can see John Doyle doing at uh, roughly 1 minute 25 in is something that I call the Faith Pattern. The reason I call it the Faith Pattern is because it sounds a little bit like the intro to Gotta Have Faith by George Michael. This kind of thing. Is that kind of bunk junk kind of rhythm. So the way that John Doyle uses this pattern is he starts off um, this really cool little ascending chord run, beginning on G minor and going up the scale. He's in the key of D minor at this point. But the rhythm that he does is the interesting part. So he does it like this. Something like that. If you look at the accents on the strumming there, what he's got is, if I just do it without any chords, my faith pattern. And mostly he puts the changes on where those accents are. So you get something like this. And then from there he goes back to changing on the beats. So that's one, two, three, four for the last bar. So altogether, that sounds like this. So through a combination of the quote unquote faith pattern, which is by the way a really nice strumming pattern for reels in its own right and gives a kind of more funky flavour, um, but through combining that with moving the chords on the accented beats, you can get loads of really nice chord progressions. I'll just give you another quick example of how you could take that and apply it in other keys. Let's go back to the key of D major and imagine we've got a tune in D. If I'm taking a really simple progression, I'll go from D to G. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a linking chord. So I'm going to go D and then the first inversion of D or uh, F sharp minor shape in drop D, depending how you look at it which is like that, and that's going to link me nicely into my G. So I would do something like... Something like that, where every time there's one of those accented quavers from my faith pattern, I uh, put the chord change on it. through the uh, common chords in D major doing like E minor to A there with the same principle changing on the accented beats. So that's a really nice thing to have a play at. I definitely recommend going away and playing with the, the faith pattern because it's a really fun strumming pattern 
And as I said before, I've made lots of videos about it in the past, and you can find it in my book as well, which is probably well worth checking out if you're interested in this kind of thing. So that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope you've been enjoying my four-part mini-series on the style of John Doyle. You can find all of my free videos on folkfriend.co.uk, along with all my books, products, strings, uh, cool things like the mode wheel, um, loads of good stuff on there, go and check it out. Next week, I've got an absolutely amazing special guest. I'm going to be interviewing Frank Kilkelly, the author of um, Accompanying Irish Music on Guitar. He is um, super well known as an Irish guitarist and as a fantastic teacher, so uh, I'm really looking forward to speaking to him. That's going to be out next Saturday. If you want to tune in for that, hit the subscribe button. Do me a favour while you're there as well, hit the little thumbs up. That really helps me out. Um, that's it then for this week. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I'll see you next Saturday.